a whopping 232 subscribers and I am really really happy for that. Thank you all so much for the support and I'm trying my best to post as much as possible. Let's try to make it 300. Today we're going to be talking about something really really important for every SPM student. In fact, it's one of the most important things uh, an SPM student has to face before sitting for that exam itself. Their preparations with something very special called Soalan Ramalan or Soalan Bocho or in English, leaks, tips, um, whatever you want to call it. It all revolves around the same thing. They are basically just rumors about what possibly can come out for um, your actual SPM examination for a particular subject on D Day. So here's what you have to do. Firstly, realize that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's generally leaks. At the same time, it also doesn't mean that because you are afraid it won't come out, you don't look at it at all. So they are really important because there is a possibility that some of those things might come out. Because all of those things most probably have gone through some form of analysis by some person who knows what he's doing. Which is why in today's video, we're going to talk about how you're going to approach these type of leaks or tips and what approach really, really matters. The most efficient way of obtaining the best result out of these tips or leaks. Let's begin. So here's what I'm going to be doing. After explaining to you the types of leaks or tips that can possibly be faced by you, I will then go subject by subject on what type of leaks and what exactly can you look forward to in those leaks and what can you really trust, what can you not trust at all and what you should completely avoid no matter what. So let's get right into the types of leaks or tips that you most probably already have at home. So the first one would be spotted question modules. Now we know this better as Andrew Chu or Basti Score and these are just the few companies that do produce this type of modules but there are many more. They are usually around this stick and you can buy it directly from their website or even just photo study it from your friend. Now the second type of tip that we have would be the tips from your senior teacher or a teacher that really has that much of bragging rights because they are the alpha teacher in your school who knows best about that subject matter. Now these teachers are usually teachers that have experience marking the exam paper for those subjects or they have teaching experiences of over 20 to 30 years. They're exceptional teachers, just to simplify it. Now, the third type of tip or lead that you most probably will be getting would be the tips right before your SPM exams. Now, these are tips that are crucial, not because they are accurate, but because they are the most convincing to make you think that, that exactly, exactly that question would come out. These are really, really dangerous tips and these are tips that you really have to watch out for because most of the time these tips would end up having sulit written right underneath their pages just to convince you into thinking that those papers are actual SPM papers. Very convincing but it is never never accurate, never ever follow it. Now that we're quite clear with the types of tips or leaks that you would probably get, let's move on to the subjects. Here's how I'm going to structure my entire flow. Firstly, I would start with BM, then I'll go with English, then I will go with Modern Maths, then Add Maths, then all the sciences together, Chemistry, Physics and Bio, and finally, Moral. I cannot talk about certain subjects like Econs, Accounts, and um, also Pendidikan Islam because I didn't get a chance to take those subjects. And so, if you would like to know more about those subjects, do drop a comment. I'll try to get someone who really does know well enough for those subjects to come and talk on the channel. DM, one of the hardest, not because it's a difficult subject, but because it gives you so much of time for you to contemplate about whether or not those leaks and tips are going to come out. So how do you go about it? Quite simple actually, just don't be blind. Don't go into that exam hall assuming that the Bina Ayat list you are given is going to come out, because most of the time, it won't. Instead, when you do get binayat leaks or tips, don't memorize the vocabulary and meaning. Instead, just understand what those words mean. When you enter the exam hall and you know what they mean, you can just structure your sentences as easily as possible. That's for binayat. Don't memorize your vocab. However, moving on towards the only other reliable part that you can probably rely on in terms of tips and leaks, it is the formatting and theme of binayat. Your tema for binayat and also for Ulasan, for instance, bagian C and bagian B are things that you can depend on, but not in terms of the whole title. So, roughly understand what the theme would require you to do. Roughly understand a bit or two about what themes are likely to come out for that year. 
but don't assume that a particular title will come out for the Karangan part or even for Bahagian C. Make sure that it's just general information that you're absorbing so that when you enter the exam hall, you're able to think on your feet instead of trying to spit out whatever you have already memorized. Never ever memorize. Now let's talk about English. English is pretty much the same as BM in terms of preparation with your tips. So what you have to do is to firstly realize that you cannot rely on one particular format just because a lot of modules show you that that format will be coming out or just because a teacher has mentioned that in the past few years this particular format hasn't came out yet. Instead, make sure you memorize all the formats that you have to memorize for your writing because if you do prepare for one particular format and it doesn't come out, not being able to write the other format will really cost you a lot and a lot of marks and this has happened to many people during my year itself where they forgot what the format should have been. So ensure that you have that format in your head, all the formats in your head for the matter and then for your essays, make sure that you don't read or just memorize one single question. Instead, focus on the themes of frequently mentioned questions. For instance, if you've seen a few modules and you've noticed that a lot of times they've mentioned something related to the environment, then focus on the theme of environment. After realizing or noticing a repetition in the themes, make sure that you don't study specifically for one question. Instead, study on the entire theme such as let's say the environment once again, then study some statistics about the environment, what's going on, um, world issues, um, things that are smarter, things that sound good when you can write it down in the essay for instance, um, something that the United Nations has done, or what types of carbon tax measures are being implemented all around the world. These are things that will really spice up your essay to an extent and these are the things that will really help you instead of just memorizing a whole essay and realizing that the essay doesn't come out and you can't really use much of what you've memorized. Now for modern maths. I have to admit, I'm a ad maths freak to an extent because I really enjoyed ad maths at that point of time. But modern maths was a subject that I would really do badly in because I focused so much on my ad maths and thought that my focus on ad maths would somehow equate to similar level of adequacy for my mod maths. I did badly for my mod maths. There was even this one time where my mod maths was my lowest mark and my ad maths was my highest mark. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people also ex have experienced this before. It's not something uncommon, but the deal with mod maths is that practice is the easiest way to go about it. And leaks, don't worry nothing is ever going to come out. There's no such thing as leaks for maths in terms of specific questions. You will never know what exactly will come out. And that's just the beauty of maths as a whole. However, you will realize that there will be a pattern for your objective paper for maths. And this pattern has been <laughs> going on for a really long time. Just make sure that you follow the best and the most reliable leaks in the market. And I'm going to expose this secret to you. It's your past year papers. I know it's really cringy that I'm saying that, but genuinely, your maths paper one is just a repetition of your past year papers and you really just have to keep doing your past year papers until you can score yourself 39s, 38s or 40s all the time. And then you will just walk into the exam hall and out with smiles. As easy as that for your paper one. Now for add maths, a subject that I really love. Of course, just like modern maths, it's a math subject, right? So you most probably wouldn't be getting any specific leaks unless you know someone who set the paper, which is probably impossible also. So at maths, you won't get any leaks. However, listen to funky stuff. Meaning, if you overhear people or rumors going around saying that this particular topic is going to come out or a question asking about this, this, this might come out, most probably it's because rumor has it in mind and rumor has it there's a likelihood a higher probability that you would have to face a question like that somehow in the actual examination so there's no harm just listening to these leaks of course there is a harm focusing on these leaks so and maths one thing that you will notice is that as years passed their format changed a little where they don't follow that order of what topic comes first and what com what topic comes last. But my solid tip to you would be don't neglect linear programming and don't neglect your linear law. Make sure that you master them because they are free marks. 
and you will never get a twist that will really ruin your brain during the exams that will really detriment your grades in any way let them save you and that's the best leaks that you can ever get prepare for all of course now for the big package your science subjects chemistry physics and bio these are subjects that have a tendency of repeating itself however in the later years moving towards 2020 or moving towards 2019 to be more specific in my year the objective questions haven't been repeating themselves as frequently as they used to they usually sound or seem the same but they have a twist to it so either way practicing your paper one will be quite useful in preparing you for the thinking process in answering your paper one questions no leaks can possibly be accurate enough and if for instance andrew chu or whatever company were to tell you this is likely to come out don't go ahead and trust it practicing is perfectly fine because it's just stimulating your brains anyway and there's never a harm to practice but never rely on them don't only read your objective questions from those modules because that's very very unreliable however here's the important part your paper tree now paper tree is something that you are very very likely to come up with very very accurate tips however a lot of twists can occur because paper tree usually revolves around whether or not it has came up in the past few years so analysis and strong strong analysis by those exceptional teachers that i mentioned just now can really really come true in many cases yet a lot of times they have failed students as well because the reliance of students towards these paper tree tips made them so so non-independent that they couldn't think on their feet when they realized a different question came out hence why even if you do prepare for a paper tree that you really think is going to come out you really need to make sure that you are well prepared for it to not come out as well but the final tip for your science subjects is mrsm so i have to say this because it really is quite true and quite accurate in a lot of cases it is that a lot of times teachers that set these papers are teachers from schools that are sbps and more specifically mrsm so get your get your papers or your child papers from sbp and mrsm friends make sure that you do the science subjects and make sure that you do well in that if you do badly the first time you try your trial papers from sbp or mrsm then keep doing them until you can score really really high for them then study everything in your syllabus don't just depend on these papers because just because you assume that some teacher might be setting the SPM paper from SPP or MRSM it doesn't mean that it is true it doesn't mean that it is definitely going to come out as well so be sure that you can think on your feet but have these assistances to guide you towards the better direction to getting closer to what might come out for your SPM examination and finally for one of the hardest subjects in the whole of SPM Pendidikan Moral <laughs> Moral isn't a difficult subject because it requires some philosophical debate to be read in your essays. It isn't difficult because you have a lot of content to remember. But instead, it's difficult because nobody bloody knows what the hell to write on the paper. There is never a proper guideline about what is the right format and what isn't the right format. We just assume that whatever our teachers are saying is correct and then we just pray that whatever that is is accurate enough for you to get the marks. A few things that a lot of people don't realize is that in 2019 for my year SPM, we didn't need to memorize any definitions first. Second, we ended up writing many nilais for our essays, just writing the nilais that we thought could fit in and whatever was in the schema was then bracketed and just given a mark. And that was how they marked the SPM paper essentially for my year. So, that wasn't something that a lot of people knew was going on because a lot of people just don't know how the marking system goes by because a lot of people also don't realize what moral really requires as a subject in SPM. so the key or the biggest leap that you can possibly have is to realize or to go and find out what the exact format is or what the exact requirement marking requirement is for your moral paper now in order for you to attain this information, it isn't just walking to your school's uh, moral teacher and asking if this is right or this is wrong. It is instead discussing with a lot of other teachers and comparing their answers. Because most of the time, it would be memorize your definitions, make sure that you write the right analyze, and then yada yada yada, hopefully you do well. You have to find for a teacher who really understands 
how the paper is being marked and the only way you can do so is by asking a teacher who marks the paper. So be sure that you find for a teacher, whether in your school or not in your school, ask them whether or not this is the right approach towards moral. Even better, if you can ask someone who had marked the previous year's moral paper, then you would have the most up-to-date way of answering your moral paper. That's all. That's the biggest leak you can possibly get for moral. Other than that, it's all you. It's just your own moral beliefs and how you think what is right and what is wrong should be justified. And that isn't something that should be difficult for you to begin with. Just think for SPM and UH, right? <laughs> so, good luck. Make sure that you do well and don't rely on your tips and leaks entirely. At the same time, don't neglect like them because sometimes they can be accurate. And if they were, you'd be really happy that they were. If they weren't, then at least you didn't entirely rely on them and then forget whatever you would have learned before. Hopefully you do well and I hope to see you all soon.